Okay, I guess this is happening. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me to upload this nighttime skincare routine, but also you guys know that I've been delaying this to happen for the longest time. For me to recommend a makeup product, it's more easier and more comfortable because it's all about the colors and the texture and how it feels on your skin and the staying power and whatnot. It's more universal. I feel like my purpose of making a skincare video, it needs to be more focused on educating you guys by providing informative video that is based on scientific data and like research and studies and all that to enable you guys to make the right decision to find the right product for you. It's not me diagnosing like the right product and diagnosing your entire skincare regime and that is why I feel so rewarded when you guys actually take my information and apply it in your own way and I know a lot of you guys actually message me saying that you know you guys are waiting for this video because you are so ready to place an order of every single products that I show in this video and I do not really care if you buy all of these products or not but I just feel like that's not really my purpose of making skincare videos and another thing that you guys need to know that is I do not have a set solid skincare routine given the fact that I test out different products every now and then. I really wish I can commit to one single just basic, just minimal skincare routine but it never allows me to do that. I actually play by ears day by day listening to what my skin needs and examining what my skin condition is that day. I would use different products but I always play within the safe product zone that I know it's not going to over irritate my skin or over stress my skin but I don't want you guys to use so many different products in one skincare routine. Less is more when it comes to treating acne prone skin. There's a lot of reasons why I was delaying this video. My ideal skincare routine in my head would be completely toxic, hazardous, ingredient free, including fragrance including essential oil that is actually there to enhance the sensorial because those can actually sensitize your skin too. It's just a massive struggle for me to actually find decently performing product that doesn't have fragrance. So that's my biggest issue. Yeah. Respect your skin barrier function. There's a lot of skincare products out there that can actually manipulate your skin barrier function or destroy your moisture barrier, lipid barrier, and really disrupt that kind of natural flow of your sebum production. You want to look for some Something that's gentle enough that you know it's just going to boost that skin barrier function. Congratulations, you made it to the second part of this video, which is the actual nighttime skincare routine. So first things first, I dissolve my eye makeup and remove it with this Garnier Clean Sensitive 2-in-1 Gentle Makeup Remover. This is really, really gentle as it claims to be. It is really effective in dissolving and breaking down the waterproof mascara. And then I'll move on to oil cleansing and that's when I will massage my skin as well give a little bit of pressure to kind of get that blood circulation going underneath especially around the lymph areas this is what I'm currently testing out this is from Manufactory Pure Cleansing Oil it comes in the yellow bottle this is a blend of soybean oil grapeseed oil olive oil squalene camellia evening primrose jojoba and etc etc everything looks good in terms of the ingredient list except when I saw the essential oil like lavender oil orange oil and everything Thing. but other than that the product performance is amazing it's quite gentle it emulsifies pretty well if I'm feeling quite lazy I would use a cleansing water from L'Oreal this is by far my favorite cleansing water that I've ever used I do like this because it's soothing and hydrating at the same time while it removes your makeup but this guy says you don't need to rinse it off but I recommend you guys to rinse any detergents or surfactants off like cleansing water is not supposed to stay on your skin follow up with a water-based cleanser for sure, whatsoever, no compromise. I don't like using cleansing water that much because I feel like cotton pad, like swiping it all over your face can actually irritate your skin over time. And then I'll move on to the second step cleansing, which is using a water-based cleanser. You guys all know this is my holy grail, the Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser. And when it comes to choosing the right water-based cleanser, I don't recommend any cleanser out there containing SLS, SLES, ALS, or ALES because those are very harsh detergents that actually can disrupt the skin barrier function. So you want to use the mildest and the most gentle cleanser out there that doesn't strip away your moisture while it kind of purifies your face. I very occasionally would use the COSRX Low pH Good Morning Gel Cleanser, but this guy does contain salicylic acid 0.5%, I believe. So if you're using any kinds of BHA into your routine, I don't see the point of, you know, overusing it again. And this can be a little bit more drying than 
than this guy so I wouldn't use this in a daily basis. So as soon as I cleanse my face, I would just pat dry all the water back into my skin. I would never use a towel. Within one minute, I would just jump into my skincare routine starting with a first treatment essence. This guy is something that I've been using religiously over the past few years. It's the Primera Miracle Seed Essence. It has 93% of lotus seed extract. It is not fermented so if you do have problems with using fermented skincare, this might be a good option to start with. It contains niacinamide and it's fragrance free. Wonderful, hydrating, rejuvenating, love it. But if you're willing to try fermented skincare, Misha Time Revolution, such a staple, such a classic. I mean if you can't afford SK2, this is a wonderful place to start with fermented skincare and this is actually very hydrating and skin softening as well. So. These two are quite nice. Moving on to serum, and this is where I have the most fun with it. I would actually rotate a lot of serums depending on my skin condition and my skin needs that day. But yet again, if you are confused with layering different actives in a single routine, just use one active in one single skincare routine. For my skin, I love using vitamin C in the daytime, and then I would use niacinamide at night. So at night, I love this The Ordinary Niacinamide 10% plus Zinc 1% for brightening my complexion, evening out those dull spots, and if you do have hyperpigmentation, this is a very potent concentration, so you will definitely see results with it after consistent use. And ever since I used this in my skincare routine, I feel like my sebum production have been regulated quite well. On another nights that I don't feel like using niacinamide or either vitamin C, I would use the Buffet. So Buffet is a peptide-based serum, so it has a lot of different complexes or compounds of peptides that can build the amino acid and the fatty acid on your skin. You can find more detailed review on the ordinary products in the dedicated review. I will leave it up there. Moving on to a moisture this kind of gets a little bit complicated because I just love mixing oil and creating my own moisturizer. So these two products are my cocktail base for my moisturizer. It's the Glossier Super Bounce and this is the Drunk Elephant B Hydra Intensive Hydration Gel. The main ingredients for both products are hyaluronic acid and vitamin B5 panthenol which are the wonderful water retaining humectant ingredients. If you're using these alone it might be too dry but when you mix some oil with it wonderful. And I sometimes can't be bothered mixing everything together so I would just reach for a moisturizer. And you guys all know I've been religiously using this Primera Alpine Berry Water Cream for ages, like for years and years. The texture is more emollient so it'll be more suitable towards normal to combination skin. It doesn't leave any greasy film or occlusive film on top which is amazing for those of you guys who hate those kind of occlusive or heavy creams. It's like a very basic moisturizer that does it all. If you do have a little bit oilier skin this is a wonderful option that I recently discovered and I've been using it quite a bit because the weather has been warming up in Korea so this is perfect this is the Viproof Optimula Hyaluron Potent Balance Creep if you feel like your moisture and oil balance is kind of like out of whack this is like a wonderful option that can actually balance it out I would say it's a very very lightweight it absorbs pretty well without drying your skin out it pretty much hydrates your skin from like the deeper layer onto to the top and it plumps your skin but when you mix this with like a drop of rosehip oil it's like perfect other than hemp seed oil and rosehip oil which is my staple in my skincare routine i would use tamanu oil as a spot treatment because this is amazing at fading hyperpigmentation and discoloration so it's been helping me a lot and as a spot treatment for blemishes or breakouts this is something that i'm currently using at the moment it's actually a concealer from v proof so as you can see there's a concealer but on the other end there's a tea tree oil blended with jojoba oil, vitamin E, and other antioxidants. So I've been quite enjoying this. Then I would do chemical exfoliation once a week with lactic acid peel from Cat Berkey. It never irritated my skin like any other acid peels that I tried before. It's a wash off type of mask that you do after you cleanse your face and it's been amazing at resurfacing and really calming down those kind of little congestions like around my forehead. And I actually haven't used street masks in a while. The last time I used sheet mask was like three months ago and that's a record but I feel like I'm pretty balanced 
in my skincare regime already that I really don't need another step but if I do need a little bit of extra oomph to my skin I would use these two masks this is the galaxy pack from Glossier it's actually a clay mask it's the first clay mask that I found non-drying and it actually doesn't drip away your natural moisture or your natural oil it actually keeps your skin really really hydrated but purified an oldie but goodie here we have the Cosrx rice mask and it's a sleeping mask so you apply this at the end of your entire nighttime skincare routine so if I feel like my skin needs a little bit more intense nourishment or moisture this is something that I would layer after my moisturizer I wish I had you back Lay next to you and kiss your neck To feel your heart beat next to mine You don't know how much I miss the time I know I did you wrong when I left that day I just wasn't aware what this would do to me I was the one to break our love into pieces And now I can't believe